Israeli troops have been pulling out of Gaza since Hamas announced that they would agree to the one-week ceasefire less than a day after Israeli Prime Minister Ehud Olmert announced a unilateral cessation of hostilities. Israel and Hamas Olmert says that he wants to withdraw Israeli troops from Gaza as soon as possible now that Hamas has been dealt a crippling blow. The ceasefire went into effect at 2 a.m. local time after three weeks of fighting that killed some 1,200 Palestinians, about half of them civilians, that according to Palestinian and United Nations officials. The Israeli government says that at least 13 Israelis also died in the fighting. A United Nations aid compound was hit by an Israeli tank and artillery fire. Storage buildings and a garage were reportedly destroyed in the attack. A UN spokeswoman at the scene reported that there were only a few injuries and no deaths as a result of the attack, but that most of the relief supplies that the UN was ready to distribute in Gaza had gone up in smoke. She said thousands of pallets of aid, including food, fuel, water, and medicine, were destroyed. A very unfortunate situation here in the UN compound in Gaza. Our warehouses have been hit by some type of explosive, and it caught a light. The fire has spread from the workshops by the oil and spread to the warehouses. One by one, the warehouses are going up. We're now trying to build a buffer zone between the warehouses and the offices try and stop the officers. We've lost all our food and all our medicine to this fire. Israel shelled several UN installations, including schools and storage depots, since the conflict in Gaza began. At first blush, one would rightfully ask the question, why would the IDF do such a thing? Well, the answer is simple. Hamas has been launching their indiscriminate weapons of terror from those UN compounds. Hamas has purposely been using Palestinian civilians taking shelter from the fighting as human sandbags hoping that Israeli forces won't retaliate against weapons fired from UN compounds. I have tremendous respect for any person willing to stand up and give their life for something that they believe in. But Hamas does not fall into that category. They're cowards. They attack Israeli civilians from behind and among the women and children of the Gaza Strip, hoping for one of two outcomes. In the first place, they hope that Israel won't target areas where there are civilians, especially when those civilians are taking shelter in what are supposed to be protected areas. And if that doesn't work, and I think we've seen that it doesn't, Hamas hopes to use the pictures and videos of civilian casualties for propaganda purposes and paint the Israelis as war criminals. You know, it boggles my mind that any person would allow a woman or a child into a war zone, much less use them as flesh and blood sandbags. If Hamas had any regard whatsoever for the ordinary people living in the Gaza Strip, they would tell them to stay in their homes and away from the fighting where it's exponentially safer. But no, these cowards are literally dragging children in the line of fire, hoping that Israeli forces won't shoot. They fire their mortars and rockets from protected areas in violation of international law. They use UN ambulances as troop transports, and then they bitch and moan when they get targeted anyway. 1,200 Palestinians have died in the fighting so far, and some sources say more than half of them have been civilians. In my opinion, the responsibility for civilian deaths in the Gaza Strip belongs squarely on the shoulders of Hamas. And the UN has to share some of the responsibility for civilian deaths as well. They've got guns. Why don't they use them? They need to be repelling Hamas operatives who intend to use UN property to launch weapons into Israeli towns. But once again, we see the hypocrisy and the impotence of the UN in the face of a serious threat to peace in the Middle East. If the UN really wants to do something constructive in Gaza, then they need to get together some of their best Fijian shock troops and disarm Hamas by force. This terror organization indiscriminately murders innocent civilians, both Israeli and Palestinian. Its charter calls for the absolute destruction of the State of Israel, a sovereign state that was created by the United Nations in 1948. I thought that the UN was supposed to protect its member nations. Is that not its sole purpose? If that's the case, why don't they do anything when these nations are attacked by terrorist entities like Hamas? They never take any decisive action. If it weren't for the United States and NATO, Bosnian Muslims would have been decimated by Christian Serbs during the Balkan Wars. Where was the UN? Oh yeah, I remember. Kofi Annan and his son were busy lining their pockets with millions of dollars that were intended for Iraqi civilians. Politicians. I swear, they're the same all over the world. They talk, 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 and they don't say anything. Meanwhile, they try to figure out how they can best get rich and more powerful on the backs of those that they seek to govern. I should be emperor of the world for a month. Just a month. Then the world would see some justice. My credo is this. 
I don't care if you're a Jew, a Muslim, a Christian, a Hindu, Buddhist, or atheist. If you're a scumbag, I'm coming to get you.